library and literally just like, you know the dial up tone? I was talking to my friend Emma the other day and whenever I think, I just hear the dial up tone and it's just, it's not good. <laughs> it's just, okay, anyway, and hi! So welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Emmy and today I thought it would be nice to talk about my experience with college and uh, HND because I wish I had someone to tell me all the things that I now know about doing HND and college and how it's all different compared to uni and just you know I wish I knew <laughs> some things in advance because of the experiences I've been through. So, yeah I thought this would be a funky little thing to reflect on the best and worst years of my life. Before I get into anything if you're going to HND because you didn't get the grades uh, or you're getting HND because you didn't get into the university you wanted, you're not a failure, there's nothing wrong with you. If you want to get into university, there are always different ways to get in. Don't beat yourself up about it. Because if you attack yourself and you bring yourself down, it's so much more easier to let everyone else's opinions get in the way of you and your advancement to being happier. Personally, when I first started doing my HND course, which was two years ago now, I was miserable because I didn't get into the university or the course I wanted and I thought this would be the best way to get into it. I thought I was a failure and especially compared to all my other friends who were going into these more prestigious universities and I felt like I was just trapped and stuck in this situation and I couldn't get out and I had two years and I was like, oh God, I just, I was so unhappy. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. You, you're just, you're still getting a qualification. You're just on a different path. There's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes when you tell people, you know, that you're studying HND or that you're in college to do something, they kind of talk to you and kind of down on you a little bit, even though they don't realize it. I think it's more of a subconscious thing because I've experienced it so many times. You'll tell them what a HND is and then you have to explain what a HND is because they don't know what a HND is. To be fair, it's not very common. And then they'll go, oh, yeah, that's great. Good for you in that like slightly patronizing, I'm trying to be supportive tone. I went through a lot in the two years and you know, people were kind of going, I'm supposed to be in university and I'd be like, <laughs> I'm doing something that's equivalent to the first two years in university, please. I'm trying my best. In the end of the day, like I said, you're going there to get a degree and you're getting out with one as well. <laughs> What I'm gonna talk about first is the more academic thing. There were two classes for my course. Each class, there was basically roughly around 20 people. So you can imagine, you know, it was much more personal. The tutors can talk to you one-to-one one -one and ask them questions whenever you want because, you know, they're actually there and they're, they're able to help you. In terms of HNDs, I think for majority of them, if not all of them, they're all coursework. That means, you know, you just do essays and you do projects and you do group work. Everything is a lot more practical and hands-on than it might be in university where you have to cram everything and you have to remember everything for an exam. We got the chance to make uh, multiple films. Um, obviously, <laughs> as any amateur or beginner, they're, mine were not great. Oh, oh boy. I would like to think that I've um, improved. I'm not sure about that, but I'm on the path to getting better at least. <laughs> yeah, everything's more practical. Everything is essay-based, coursework based, and everything is handed in. Usually, um, because it's BTEC, uh, I don't know if they still continue this, this year or next year, I'm not sure. But with us, we got a formative deadline, which was basically a draft deadline. We had to get feedback, and then we would have our final deadline, which was a summative. So that's really handy. And in terms of grades, we didn't get marked with letters or we didn't get marked with percentages. We get marked on on three things. A distinction, a merit, and a pass. So a pass is just what well, you need it to pass. And then the merit and then the distinction. The distinction's the best one basically. But also the thing is that you need to remember is that now you are an adult. <laughs> you need to take initiative. The tutors are there to help you but you need to take initiative and you need to be responsible for doing your coursework. You need to be responsible for asking for help. You are responsible for going out there and getting work opportunities. Luckily for me, um, my tutors were very um, conscious of the fact that you need work experience and they always made a point to be like, you need work experience. It's not enough to just 
have a degree, it's not enough to just have a, you know, a pass or a merit or a distinction if you can't prove anything. Another thing that I experienced was that a lot of my classes uh, were very much classroom based. We got taught through PowerPoints and stuff like that, we got taught but it was all in a classroom based setting where you could put your hand up and you can ask questions. It was very much, you know, you're in a classroom, you've got your tutor talking and you've got all your classmates around you. So that part was kind of a weird phase for me because I was like, unconsciously I knew I was in college, but it was weird because it was a carry on from secondary school and I was like, that's a weird thing. I, I wanted to feel a complete different experience, but it's not, it's quite similar. I also have a handy dandy book here. Okay, so college is a lot more chill and casual than you might expect. Uh, I feel like everyone might go through this, um, even if you're in university or regardless, like if you're transitioning from secondary schools into third level higher education, it's kind of weird <laughs> because technically you're an adult, right? But you were in a very rigid, you know, schooling system and you had to address people by their last names, like Miss and Miss. In my college, we would address all our tutors by our, their first names and that was kind of weird. Um, if your tutor sucks, <laughs> I've had some tutors um, that I haven't gotten along with and you know, it do be like that sometimes, uh, but if it gets too far and there's a conflict and it's just too much, uh, please go talk to another tutor that you may or may not like more or not and just talk to them and say, hey, I think there is a problem with me and this other tutor. I sense there's a bit of a conflict between us. Can you and this tutor and I all sit down together and just talk about it? Uh, let me just tell you, communication is key in life, you need it every time, anyway, communication is key. So there is that. Also, please learn how to Harvard reference. You always need a Harvard reference, all of your research. The second part of this video is social aspect. I said that wrong. Uh, it's the social aspect. Um, in terms of the social aspect, what something I didn't expect, especially with a small class, there are still cliques. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone still goes into different groups. Everyone still has cliques and stuff like that. It's just the way it goes. I, I think there's some reason for it. I just don't know why. So just expect that. And when if you're going into a new class or there already is cliques and stuff like that, kind of go into it and be like, hey, this is me. Let's and then understand how the group relationships and stuff work. And if you're an introvert like me, I would suggest that you go find an extrovert like my friend Jess. Um, she's such a sweetheart. She's definitely an extrovert and she is the nicest person on earth. But if you could find an extrovert like her and you're an introvert, then at least <laughs> you can meet new people through her. <laughs> Try and get out there and just talk to people. Well, obviously another thing is drama. I would recommend no drama. Just don't. <laughs> if there's a problem, please just learn to communicate with your friends or the person you have a conflict with and just be like, hey, I have a problem with X, Y, Z. Can we sort this out? If it's an issue that you feel really strongly with and you've tried talking to them about it and they just don't want to listen and they just don't want to talk to you about it and they're being hostile, you have every right to just cut them out of life. Um, you don't have to stay with someone and you don't have to prove to someone who is not good for you anymore, you can just leave. Even if you have history, even if you have experience with them, just, you don't have to stay if you're not happy. And that's fine. And to be fair, I've been in my fair share of drama and conflict, and I've come out with it of, <laughs> and I've come out just not feeling it. I'm not interested in it anymore. I kind of just want to vibe and live my life and just, sit at home and drink tea with my best mates and my boyfriend. It's just the way it is. So there's that. Um, in terms of nightlife, yeah, it's relatively the same. It's normal. Um, you just drink, have fun, go to bars, go to clubs. Uh, if it's your first time going out with um, anyone, this is just a PSA in general, or at least have one person that you know will look after you and will make sure everything um, will be okay because don't get into situations where, you know, you're going out with people you don't even know and you could risk something. Just don't do it. Be safe, kids. Just 
be safe. <laughs> also, if you've never been to a club, please, please bring ID. I know this is like common knowledge, but I've run into this experience with someone else who didn't bring their ID. Please, please bring your ID. <laughs> Just bring it. The thing that you need to learn the most is just definitely putting yourself out there. It's a scary time in your life. It's a very much a transitional phase in your life. Just remember everyone's going through it. Don't think everyone else has it together. Let me tell you, literally, I don't even know one single 20 year old that has their shit together. Most 20 year olds don't. 18, 19, it's fine. And if you choose, if you think that this course isn't for you, try and hold out for a year or at least six months to see whether or not the course is for you. And you can always leave. You don't have to stay. Make sure that your uh, mental health comes first. Grades and stuff like that come second compared to your mental health and your well-being. Okay? That just you have to hold on and you have to look after yourself. Also, practical HND degrees are kind of hard to do when you're online and at home. <laughs> that's uh, that's definitely something I figured out in the last couple of months, but it's still possible and you can still do it. I had I didn't have the best times in college and I definitely wanted to drop out multiple times. I just really wasn't happy, but I'm really glad I did. I did try and stick it out. And I think the most important thing as well to remember is that as long as you just try, then there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with trying. There's nothing wrong with taking a risk. And maybe other people might judge you for taking the risk, whatever. Just in the end of the day, if it makes you happy and it's he um, healthy for you, then who, who cares? As long as you don't put yourself down for that, because there's no reason for that. If it makes you happy and it it's healthy for you, go for it. You should definitely, if they have it, you should go and join clubs and societies and just meet you people. That's another thing you should totally do. I didn't get the opportunity to do it, so you should do it. it I, I, it's fun, it's good. Just put yourself out there, try it. Um, like I said, this is a phase in your life where everything you should do is just try it out. You know, there's no point in you know, worrying about it or anything like that. You're young, it's fine, just go for it. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions or you wanna know about my experience with doing HND course uh, or anything else, uh, just leave it in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching, bye.